Okay, so good afternoon uh, from the Philippines. So good afternoon, everyone. I will be presenting on the Code of Agricultural Practices for Corn. Um, the Philippines, we have the PNS, the Philippine National Standards uh, for um, the Code of Good Gap Practices for Corn. So uh, it is numbered as uh, PNS buffs um, 20, Dutch 2018. So uh, it was from the 20s, 2008 version. It was only in 2018 that it was updated. And as of now, the buffs um, in our pipeline for updating, uh, we still have no, um, uh, not in the pipeline for updating of, the, uh, of this uh, code of a gap for corn. So uh, the contents of my presentation will be the rationale, the farm location and environment, corn seed selection, importance and procedure in soil sampling, farm structure and facility maintenance, pre-harvesting, harvesting, post-harvesting post practices. Uh, I also include uh, uh, the development of uh, aflatoxin in corn, its prevention and control, because it is one, one of the main objective of uh, this uh, code of gap for corn is to uh, minimize or prevent the uh, occurrence of this aflatoxin in corn. Okay, uh, good agricultural practices. These are practices used to prevent, reduce the risk of, of things going wrong and to prevent the hazard during production, harvesting, post-harvest, handling of food and vegetables. So uh, we have four um, areas of uh, being addressed here, uh, which is safe food, quality, environment, and uh, workers' protection. So um, it is a holistic approach where we uh, address these four areas. So, uh, okay. Okay, so good agricultural practices, we have different kinds of hazards, which include the physical, chemical, biological hazards. So we have, we, with the code of GAP for corn, we are looking into um, pro pro producing or handling of uh, the corn produce to its safety level or yeah, to uh, safety for consumption. And then the its implementation relies on the identification of the food hazards, definition of the measures appropriate for uh, their prevention and control. And um, this gap, gap for corn is uh, are con the consolidated safety and quality standards uh, formulated by the, the Department of Agriculture for the production harvesting and on-farm post-harvest handling and storage of corn. It is uh, the code of practice emanated from the Philippine gap for fruits and vegetables, which is based on the concept of HACCP and quality management principles from farm to table continuum. Considering the increasing incidence of foodborne illnesses and incidence of aflatoxin, in swine, poultry, and other animals, the gap corn is primarily aimed at providing safe and high quality corn to consumers and feed miller processors. And um, as was um, discussed by Dr. Yap a while ago, and the production, yeah, I, uh, we, we look also, the big factor is in the production or the, our knowledge on the land that we are dealing. So, um, I'll be discussing that further on the uh, on the next slides, and it uh, this gap corn is focused on to reduce risk of pesticide and aflatoxin contamination. Additional benefits of the program for workers uh, with regards to their health, safety, and welfare, including environmental sustainability. So uh, next will be the farm location and environment. 
as was discussed by Dr. Yap a while ago, it is the, the knowledge and uh, the practice of how you manage the farm, including the environment. So the agroecology will be important in, my, um, in uh, attaining, attaining a uh, sustainable production system. So site history and management is very important for uh, you will have to, uh, you know, what, what's the condition of your soil, what's the status, uh, fertility status, uh, history of what are the crops that has been grown there before, what's the previous uses of the land, and many, many more. So uh, as part of the GAP program, it is necessary to identify possible sources of uh, chemical and microbial contaminations associated with the use of that land for agricultural production. And then we have the history of the land includes uh, what is its previous usage? Was it been used for uh, uh, animal production as a um, uh, for uh, intensive chemical uh, farming in, among others? And if the land has been uh, if the land has been used for animal husbandry, the buffer time set in the gap, gap corn is uh, three years um, buffer time before using the field for edible crop cultivation. So uh, this was set uh, as its conversion period prior from its previous use to uh, edible crop production. And then, uh, if the land has been used as sanitary landfill or dump sites, so um, farm records, um, historical background, and uh, maybe if you have if you have uh, new newly cultivated land, you may have um, you may ask neighboring farms of what's the previous use, or you have research prior to uh, purchasing the land for uh, agricultural production, and if the land has been used for a cemetery. Um, this is, uh, th this may be one cause of uh, contamination when you uh, engage into agricultural production. And um, this, uh, these are important to remember, um, the topographical features of the land, water runoff, flooding situation. Um, this will, you uh, having knowledge or uh, establishing this uh, the the management of the farm like uh, water runoff. So uh, if you have identified the part of the farm to be a potential source of contamination, um, diversion of that runoff may be uh, established, and then the flooding situation. So uh, so as to avoid. Um, potential contamination during agricultural production and ensure that fields are upstream and upwind from possible contaminants. Uh, we have a different case for uh, the flat areas here. So, uh, but uh, uh, establishing or uh, managing the farm to make it a little, uh, uh, ensuring that, uh, for example, the upwind establishing buffer zones or um, windbreakers uh, can be uh, done to, to minimize the, the potential uh, contamination. And then uh, physical barriers, as I mentioned a while ago, uh, through uh, crops, these uh, buffer zones, physical barriers, maybe fence. Uh, it, it's just not economical for uh, fencing the whole area, but uh, uh, fencing it with the uh, crops, other crops to avoid contamination can be uh, employed. Dirty. This is dirty, dirty. And then uh, information of the current use of land adjacent to the production site is critical in assessing the risk of contamination. For example, 
if your farm is nearby a uh, uh, factory uh, which include the uh, chemicals or which involve chemicals or other potential contamination so uh, it, having this in mind or having this information you will uh, you will know how you can uh, manage the the potential uh, contamination when engaging in uh, the production. And then uh, the next is the corn seed selection as, uh, as the foundation of, uh, of your uh, cropping uh, production system. And having a good seed would, uh, would lead to um, having a good yield uh, uh, accompanied by em employment of uh, the good uh, cultural practices. So seed selection, determination or the farmer's uh, method of selecting appropriate varieties that will be planted in a locality based on some considerations. So this means that um, it will be uh, on a case-to-case -case or location-based. So in some areas, this variety can be uh, very suitable for for production, while it will be not so suitable, uh, not performing well in other areas. So um, depending on the locality and then the, the, the environment, the climate in a certain area, uh, you may, you may uh, need to plant a specific variety. And then uh, essential to a profitable uh, production system and the first step to getting an optimum stand. So high quality seed has high varietal purity. You choose a seed that has varietal purity, high germination rate, uniform size, low foreign material, no weed or other crop seed and little mechanical damage. And then the criteria for selecting a seed for uh, planting is uh, if it high, choose high yielding varieties, high disease resistance, insect tolerance, local adaptability, suitability to soil and local climate, market demand, maturity and ear field characteristics, seed quality, which includes purity and germination, and uh, source of seed. So accessibility to uh, these seeds, uh, you have to consider that. And then uh, again, the importance of soil analysis and proper procedures in soil sampling. Uh, this, in, this will help you determine of the uh, accurate, the am accurate amount of uh, fertilizer to be used in your uh, corn production. And um, it will also help you minimize overuse of uh, fertilizer, spe especially the nitrogenous fertilizers, which will uh, then be is a factor in making that the corn crop susceptible to attack, uh, uh, for example, the FAW. So, uh, this soil sampling, uh, including its technique, is very uh, essential. So its importance, it provides information on the actual physical and chemical characteristics of the soil and guides the farmers in the application of the right amount and kind of fertilizers in order to attain optimum yield, guides the farmer in the identification of soil interventions for the improvement in the physical and chemical characteristics of the soil. So, and uh, the next component of the code of gap for corn is the farm structure and facility maintenance. So, uh, construct farm structures as to the intended purpose, warehouse, uh, intended for corn produce and storeroom for fertilizers, pesticide, and other uh, farm supplies and materials, protection shed of farm machineries. So uh, 
construction of these structures should be separate. Um, not that one, um, one warehouse will be intended for the three purposes to us to avoid potential contamination from uh, uh, the machineries and uh, the fertili fertilizer and pesticides and other farm supplies. And structures should be constructed in a considerable distance from each of the farm structure and in the production area to minimize contamination. All farm structures should be kept clean at all times. So um, this is true because it will be, it will, it may become a, the potential uh, breeding place of this uh, of pest. And the uh, farm equipment used in cultivation, harvesting, post harvest operations of corn should be attuned and well maintained for optimal operating conditions. Uh, so we have for equipment and containers, when used to hold produce, they must be checked for soundness and cleanliness before use and cleaned or discarded, discarded as required. For buildings and structures, they should be constructed and maintained to minimize the risk of contaminating the produce and not source of uh, storage pests. So uh, the pre-harvesting practices component of the code of good agricultural practices for corn, we have the following. Uh, for land preparation, liming may be required when the soil pH goes below 5.3. And uh, it should be done at least one month before planting by broadcasting and plowing under of about one half to two thirds of the recommended rate. The remainder of the requirements should again be broadcasted before harrowing. Liming is profitable because its residual effects in extend to four succeeding crops. And uh, plow the field at the right mo moisture content. Prepare the land thoroughly at least 14 days before planting. And uh, a well prepared soil provides uniform germination and good root development, minimize weed problem, provide better water retention in the soil. Again, um, on the local conditions, this uh, land preparation may be different. Um, the, the standard or most common practice, they, they do two harrowing and two, uh, two harrowing and two plowing of that land. But in the case of, uh, like we say, uh, Pampanga, where where the lahar, the bef uh, before the lahar, the, the smaller particles were uh, deposited, uh, their practice is that they do uh, two plowing and one harrowing uh, of the of the of the land. So uh, again, uh, depending on the um, soil property. Uh, this land preparation um, uh, can be different at the local level. And for fertilizer application, prior to land preparation, yes, the soil sample should be analyzed for uh, physical and chemical uh, properties and uh, to attain a uh, recommendation of uh, fertilizers. Soil analysis should be done every two years and carried out by an accredited laboratory and accompanied by a, a competent uh, sampling technique, a sam sampler, soil sampler, and um, use only fully decomposed organic materials in the case of uh, um, organic fertilizers and uh, use only the registered commercial fertilizers and in accordance to the recommended uh, rates and, and the soil analysis. Weeding management. 
Weeding operation should be done at the first 35 to 45, uh, 45 days, 45% uh, of the corn life cycle. So uh, it is a critical period where uh, it is on its, um, still on its vegetative stage where uh, this uh, pest would uh, infest. So uh, appropriate control of weed, uh, like using the uh, cultural practices, farmers' practices, such as proper land preparation, off barring, healing up, and or using herbicides. Ensure proper tillage operations will provide a head, head start of corn plant against uh, weeds. And spot weeding can be done also. Then uh, we proceed to the chemical method of controlling uh, weeds. So uh, commonly used are selective herbicides and uh, spraying of pre-emergence herbicides at uh, 23 to 30 days after planting. And first is spraying a Roundup herbicide for glyphosate tolerant corn can be done and at 43 to 50 days after planting. The second spraying uh, of Roundup herbicide for glyphosate tolerant corn. Water management, uh, yeah, maintain the water requirement, avoid moisture stress, particularly during flowering up to the maturation stage. At these stages, the crop is more susceptible to aflatoxin contamination. And the cornfield should be irrigated moderately, even at the time of planting to seed germination and during the early growth and development of corn plants. The average daily water consumption is corn is approximately equal to field evaporation four to five millimeters per day. So as per practice or uh, for field works, yeah, uh, water management is very crucial also because um, even on standing plants and depending on the soil, soil property, uh, uh, overwatering may cause the plant to, uh, to, uh, to bow down or fall down because the once the once the soil can be uh, oversaturated and um, accompanied by strong winds so the the corn plants can uh, fall down okay so other cultural practices if detopping of corn plants is to be practiced, this should be done after physiological maturity has been attained. And follow other recommended cultural practices of corn, including the maintenance of the recommended row and row and plant spacing to avoid overcrowding. Conduct regular monitoring at all crop stages to provide measures to problems that may arise. Okay, so um, that's for the production uh, production um, practices. We go to harvesting and post harvesting practices. Physiological matur maturity must be taken into consideration uh, because it is it pertains to the required number of days of the corn to mature. It is characterized by the presence of a black layer at the base of the corn kernel, as can be seen here, uh, it's a blackish uh, portion at the base. Evidence that there is no more food movement from the mother plant to the kernel. Then we have harvesting practices. So uh, for now, I think, uh, we have the multi-purpose harvester, which will, uh, uh, which is being uh, used from uh, the the corn kernels are uh, the corn are are harvested, and uh, 
the corn kernels are readily removed from the corn cob um, and it will be uh, put into socks. So uh, this, I will in my presentation, it is the traditional uh, traditional way of uh, um, harvesting of uh, corn, especially for uh, the yellow corn. But for the white corn, it is the uh, I think the traditional way of harvesting is uh, still being practiced. So harvesting practices, make sure that the recommended full maturity is attained. And you may use the maturity indices, harvest in the shortest time possible, uh, and uh, the avoid long, long, long exposure of the harvest in the field. And this is to prevent damage and contamination of corn ears when in contact with the soil. Use clean mats, screens, and or other suitable, suitable underlings. So we can see the, uh, the upper photo here. This is not a good practice because it, the, corn, the corn harvests are laid uh, directly in, in the ground, like uh, on the bottom photo, it shows that uh, it is uh, um, put in sacks and then uh, there is a there is a uh, the use of pole to so as not for the sacks to directly um, touch the ground. Okay, so and sort out and discard corn ears that have shown sign of damage so looking at this one the one in the center uh, it's a, a very good uh, it's a very good uh, uh, corn kernels i think uh, these are of, of good quality all of them and then for post harvest practices for howling and piling howl immediately after harvest Use clean and dry containers. Howling facilities should be clean and dry. Pile in a clean, dry and well ventilated place. So uh, as you can see the, the code of good agricultural practices of corn is, uh, uh, is really uh, created to address the uh, contamination. Uh, especially uh, aflatoxin contamination in corn. So uh, for shelling, um, the moisture content should be at least 21%. Uh, use well-maintained shellers and use, in, uh, use clean and dry containers. Uh, for drying, Dry corn immediately by any means. Uh, temporarily store the corn ears in cribs or any structure with good ventilation and not directly um, with the with a uh, not directly in contact with the ground. Dry uniformly at thirteen to fourteen uh, percent moisture content. Use clean and dry containers or. Uh, storage so uh, okay and then for storing prevent re-wetting of dry corn grains so uh, this is not a good uh, practice uh, or no uh, this is not a good situation where dry corn grains will be uh, uh, will get wet again so it may uh, it will uh, facilitate the the um, the currents of uh, fungal uh, organisms and prevent entry of insects, birds, and rodents. Provide good ventilation to the stored corn. Maintain the required moisture content, and follow the first in first out principle of uh, storing. Uh, the, the stored corn. 
So uh, I, I'm also including the, for the information of everyone as, as to the purpose or what is um, the major reason of the code of GAP for corn is the aflatoxin development. So uh, aflatoxin is a toxic metabolite produced by the fungi Aspergillus flavus, Aspergillus parasiticus, that is hazardous to human and animal health. And it is most toxic of all types of mycotoxins. It is widely abundant and it's, uh, it is inconvertible to another substance or compound needed by the human body, animal for growth and development, but is filtered and accumulates in the liver. So it is, uh, it has a Harm, has harmful effect in the human body or even the animals when consumed. And then uh, just to give you an in, uh, information about how corn is contaminated by this um, fungi. So the host, the fungus and the environment. So this is the triangle of the, uh, these are the three factors that promotes uh, uh, the, that uh, leads to the contamination of corn. So interaction is critical to the predisposition of corn towards aflatoxin contamination. So uh, the fungus is present in the environment, in the air, soil, decaying vegetation, contaminated facilities during uh, storage and post-harvest and can be spread through the conidia spores, through uh, by air, uh, insects, facility personnel in, in their boots, insects and animal, uh, higher animals. So uh, these are examples of uh, commodities or crops susceptible to aflatoxin contamination. We have corn, the peanut, copra and cassava. And uh, for the environment, um, these are the factors that favor the growth of uh, Aspergillus flavus and uh, aflatoxin contamination in the corn ear. So air, um, soil temperature and air temperature, kernel moisture, so 13 to 30% uh, MC is very susceptible to uh, aflatoxin contamination. And then the relative humidity. humidity. And uh, for others, we have this inefficient post-production practices. So, uh, that the uh, contributory factors in mycotoxin formation. So this one is the, um, are the pra common practices or some practices which are contributory to mycotoxin uh, formation in corn kernels. So how can we minimize aflatoxin contamination in corn? So we have ha ha Part of the, the code of GAP for corn is the prevention and control of aflatoxin. Okay, so as we can see in this uh, graph, uh, the value chain of uh, where this, um, the corn, ha corn harvest um, for yellow corn along the value chain, the the trend shows that uh, the aflatoxin contamination increases as uh, as the commodity is being moved. So from harvest to shelling, uh, up to drying into uh, the wholes wholesaler, the aflatoxin uh, contamination um, potential increases. And for the case of uh, of white corn, it is uh, 
the increase uh, the infestation of uh, aflatoxin contamination shows that uh, it is during the harvest to shelling though uh, it also uh, it slightly increased during the um, drying up to the trading and wholesalers uh, wholesaling so uh, prevention of aflatoxin contamination in corn uh, we have to consider uh, the corn to reach its uh, full maturity and uh, dry corn ears before shelling. So uh, moisture content should be at least uh, 18 to 21% before shelling is done to prevent mechanical damage. Dry the shelled corn uniformly to 14% or below within two days from shelling. Prevent contaminating uh, dried from fresh corn grains. Uh, intermixing and prevent insect infestation in the storage, prevent microbial growth uh, during storage. So uh, the measures for integrated control of aflatoxin, uh, GAP for corn, uh, specifically for corn, package, the package of technology for optimum crop production, control of pests and diseases, improper ir proper irrigation, appropriate application of fertilizer, use of resistant varieties, and uh, include the, the appropriate post-harvest practices. And uh, farm to market rows, uh, this is one of the, as uh, the graph shows, uh, the movement of the produce from from uh, harvesting to shelling to drying, the, the potential of uh, aflatoxin contamination also increases. So we need to uh, uh, have this farm to market roads improved. So uh, construction to link the production uh, end market and the use of alternative mode of uh, transportation. So, uh, Identified here is the water transport system or by train. But uh, yeah, these are the ideal. But uh, I think on the part of the the Department of Agriculture, we are we are uh, working on uh, linking the production and the market through these uh, farm to market roads, and uh, it is uh, is being uh, it. Is, uh, on a national uh, national school, so um, at least uh, the delivery the delivery of this uh, farm produce to the market is uh, of convenience now for the farmers. And uh, one measure that needs to be undertaken is the establishment of mycotoxin laboratories. And it must be embodied in the legislation for the monitoring and surveillance system. It will serve as a reference central and field mycotoxin analysis labs and equipped with the equipment, equipped with the needed uh, uh, facilities for uh, its purpose. Manpower requirements and MOE must be appropriated. So we need the competent or uh, yeah competent uh, manpower to uh, for this uh, or people to do this uh, and the analysis of this mycotoxin and uh, yeah uh, advocacy campaign training seminars uh, should be undertaken to uh, how this uh, how this the sampling or identification um, these cultural practices may be further improved to uh, for for the farmers or for us to minimize the effect of these uh, uh, diseases and pests in corn. And research and development, you know, efforts 
should be made in prevention and control must be backed up by strong R&D component. And one important area needing attention is the development of a reliable low-cost detection method for aflatoxin. And uh, um, maybe one of the, yeah, uh, actually this research and development is uh, um, updated or uh, uh, le uh, leveled up by uh, the Department of Agriculture by having it research for development. The, the results of these researches will be, uh, will be used for the development of the agricultural sector. So I think that's the, my presentation for the code of good agricultural practices in court. Thank you.